Hey all, Diplomat here again, coming to you from the USA. And uh, we're on part 5 of Reading Through the Discovery. Sorry it's uh, been a few days since my last videos, but I will keep them coming. Hopefully get some more done this week. Been a bit of sick, um, so uh, just getting back into it. So uh, we said we'd start back at page 69 on the Discovery page. And that's just a quick um, uh, information about his neighbor Nate and the video footage. So on August 14, 2018, approximately 9.15 hours, Officer Dole was asked to respond to 2905 Saratoga and obtain video footage from Nate. Detective Baumover gave three times to check, 145, 530, 12.47 on August 13th. Nate showed Officer Dole video footage. Officer Dole recorded the video footage and we'll have it attached to the case. Nate was asked for all the video footage for the 13th. Nate said he would have his wife contact Xfinity and have the video footage transferred. Nate said he would contact Officer Dole when the footage was available. Nate provided a phone number. So it's pretty interesting there, all video footage for the 13th. I wonder what other video footage Nate happened to have that day. Um, just be interesting. I'm not saying it would bring uh, anything specific to light but uh, throughout that day be kind of cool to see that so next is uh, a report by officer Steve uh, Walsh and uh, talks about the three um, murder in the first degrees there okay so August, August 15 2018 at 600 hours I reported the 2825 Saratoga Trail in order to process what I was informed was a consensual search of the scene for clues to missing persons that I was informed resided there. I am assigned as field evidence technician for this agency. I took various photographs of potential interest at the scene as I searched. I later had some photographs logged into evidence. It was agreed at the beginning of the search that a CBI agent would take responsibility of taking overall photographs of the scene at this time. See agent's report. I collected various items to enter into evidence, including multiple electronic devices, watches, see property tab, and transported these items for immediate analysis by assisting agencies back at the incident command center. I immediately logged these items and later, after initially an and after initial analysis by agencies on scene, sealed and placed these items into evidence. I collected a hardback book with its original Amazon shipping a box that was titled Hold Me Tight, appearing to be brand new. I was informed that it had been located in the recycling bin. It's obviously a book that Shanann had purchased. Pretty sad. Um, she was obviously working on trying to make things better, even ordering books to help them. Chris was long gone. I collected a light blue nitrile glove that was located on the top of the refrigerator in the kitchen. I don't know what came of that glove. Comment if you know. On scene, I noted the location of what belie was believed to be Shanann Watts' personal luggage with ID attached to the outside, indicating Chris Watts. I was later informed that this item had been moved from where officers had initially observed it being, namely in a small corner area directly next to the stairs leading from the main level up to the loft. I observed it located just inside and to the left of the master bedroom doorway. It appeared to be completely packed with clothes and overnight items, toiletries, as if probably still packed from a trip that I was informed Shanann Was had recently got back from. I unpacked the items to examine anything that might stand out as abnormal with photographs. It appeared to have normal personal clothing items, toiletries that one would take on any small trip. The most notable item collected on scene at the time and what appeared to be out of order were pillowcases and a top bed sheet found within the kitchen trash can located next to the kitchen island along with other items generally found in the kitchen trash. Most notably was what appeared to be missing from an average bed sheet set, and possibly what was the fitted sheet portion of a set. I immediately passed this information on to supervisors in the incident command center. So obviously if you're searching a house and you find 
pillowcases and sheets in kitchen trash cans it's very that's very strange you know how many times would you expect to see that in somebody's house um not very often especially not during a missing persons case later on same day at approximately 22 12 hours i reported back to the scene to execute a search warrant items collected from the search were logged into evidence a copy of the search warrant was left on the kitchen island along with an inventory list. End of report. So that's the end of Officer Walsh's report. And we have here Officer Ed Goodman. And this talks about the uh, car here. On Wednesday, August 15, 2018, at approximately 8.50 p.m., as requested by Sergeant Bakes, I secured the doors, rear hatch, fuel door, and hood of a white in color Lexus SUV bearing Colorado license plate, so forth. The vehicle was a vehicle of interest in this active investigation, and I was further requested to have the vehicle towed and impounded by Brad's Towing in their secured inside vehicle storage. I secured the vehicle using evidence tape, which I signed and dated, and completed a Frederick. Police Department Vehicle Impound Recovery Report. Once Brad's towing arrived, I had to unseal the driver's door so the vehicle could be loaded onto the flatbed tow truck. The vehicle was then loaded onto the tow truck and I followed it to the secured storage lot, where I once again secured the vehicle once it had been brought into the storage building. I realized that there may be another vehicle of interest from this case being transported to the storage lot and I once again unsealed the Lexus so the tow operator could secure the vehicle further inside, making room for the other vehicle. The Lexus was then sealed with evidence tape and the tape was signed and dated. I remained on scene at the storage lot until the building was locked and secured. Body-worn camera video footage of the vehicle being secured is available. I don't think I've seen that one of the Lexus. I'm sure it must be out there on YouTube then. So this is uh, Discovery Page 73 now, Officer Matthew James. This is on the 16th. I guess that's when he wrote it. Okay. On August 14, 2018, 2138 hours, I responded to the Walmart at 2285 East Ken Pratt Boulevard in Longmont reference a, reference a tip from a citizen advising Shanann was possibly cited in the checkout line buying two booster seats in a child's potty seat. Upon arrival, I met with an assistant manager who led me to the surveillance rooms. Once there, we reviewed videotape and located an adult female and two young juvenile uh, females in the self-checkout line at the store. One of the juveniles was sitting in the seat of the cart while the other was seated in the car. The juvenile female seated in the cart seat had a long branded, a braided ponytail to approximately the middle of her back. I sent photos and video footage to Detective Baumover to review uh, Balmore advised he did not believe they were the missing persons. So it's actually pretty interesting reading about some of these other things that are going on. There's obviously a lot of work that was going on um, tracking down leads that weren't even necessarily true, but it's nice to see and hear others reporting um, that they may have seen somebody that looks like that missing person and um, you know, you never know. <clears throat> so that's great. On August 15, 2018, at approximately 2015 hours, I transported Chris Watts' father, Ronnie, from the Frederick Police Department to area hotels near Firestone Boulevard and the East I-25 Frontage Road. Before leaving, Ronnie collected his duffel bag from the back of the white Lexus SUV. There were other items in the trunk of the SUV, and he advised the bag was the only item that was his. Ronnie went inside three hotels in the area, two of which he said did not have any vacancies. He advised me he was going to stay comfort suites located at such and such. Interesting. He didn't have a hotel yet. At approximately 22.05 hours, I took photos of Chris while he was in the interview room at the Frederick Police Department. The photos I took of him were uh, with his shirt off, his hands, ne head, neck, and face. There was a red mark at the left side of his neck that I, he identified as being a mosquito bite. There was also a red mark on the front of his neck. I did not observe any other obvious signs in, of injury to Chris's body. See photos. You know, people have pointed out that um, mark on his neck. 
I'm not sure what this red mark on the front of his neck is, but if you actually watch the post sentencing a press conference with the prosecutor, I think that's the one. And there's uh, one of the guys that he introduces talks about how there were no body uh, marks or injuries, and I just don't understand that because there was clearly something that he um, had on his neck that I, I would think that guy would at least address, but who knows what that was. Chris lies about everything, so why are you really believe that it was a mosquito bite? At approximately 23.02 hours, I entered the interview room and placed Chris into custody via handcuffs. A belly belt was placed on him and his hands were secured in the front. I then transported Chris to the Weld County Jail. Throughout the ride, which was recorded via body camera, did not ask Chris any questions and he did not make any statements. Chris was released to the custody of jail pro staff at approximately 0003 hours. Must have been nice to be the one to put him in handcuffs. Officer James. Officer Ian Albert. Written on 816. On August 15, 2018, I contacted the mother of Shanann Watts, Sandra Rusek, via phone. Sandra lives out in North Carolina along with her husband, Frank Rusek. I asked Sandra to give me some background as to Shanann's marriage to Chris and what she may have observed over the past few months. Sandra informed me that her daughter and Chris had been married for the past several years, and over that time, things seemed great between the two of them. Sandra believed that Chris was a great father and husband, and that she sh couldn't ask for a better person to marry Shanann. Well, that's, uh, you know, I think she, she was just so loving and accepting, and, and Chris was very just, you know, he, he did what you would want. Uh, him to do as a father, as a husband, and um, at least on the surface, and uh, they obviously accepted him very much, and you know, couldn't ask for a better person. She thought very highly of him. However, Sandra noted recently that Chris's behavior had seemed to change. Recently, Chris, Shanann, and the grandkids had spent time out in North Carolina with Frank and Sandra. During that time, Chris appeared to be appeared to be quite cold towards Shanann and the children. Sandra called one night where Shanann was quite sick due to her pregnancy and had been vomiting for most of the evening. Sandra noted that, that Chris had not been supportive at all to Shanann and Sandra found it quite odd. So obviously his behavior leading up, everyone knew something was going on, but nobody would have guessed it was this. Sandra made other references to Chris's behavior being cold and indifferent towards Shanann. I asked Sandra if she knew why this could be, and she was not certain. I also asked Sandra how often she spoke to Shanann, and her reply was, every day. Sandra described her relationship with Shanann to be extremely close, and they would talk on the phone frequently. They also chatted on video via Skype as well. Nothing, nothing further at this time. That's uh, Discovery page 74. So, you know... Shadan talked to so many people every single day, and it was probably almost as regimented as her regular life uh, of what was going on. Um, you know, as much as it was to feed her kids lunch, it was to connect with her mom. Um, maybe not at certain times, but, you know, people really, really were connected with Shanann, and it would be no very noticeable that she was gone. So this um, report is from Bradley Davies, officer, written on 816. On 81518, between 1600 hours and 1800 hours, I stood at Aggregate Boulevard and Billings Avenue, one of the entrances to the Wyndham Hill subdivision. I made contact with vehicles and pedestrians entering or leaving the subdivision. I handed out flyers with information regarding this case and asked people if they had any information that they thought might be relevant to this case. I asked each person I contacted if they had security cameras on their homes. I requested they contact Frederick Police if they have any video footage of vehicles or people in the neighborhood the morning Shanann Bell and Celeste went missing. Nothing further at this time. So I don't know how many people had cameras. It seemed like there were some. And... 
you know, I wonder if there's anything on any of those that, you know, or something, maybe something on there that the police didn't even see. I don't know. So next is Officer Brent Manley, 816. On Tuesday, August 14, 2018, I, Officer B. Manley, was called into the Frederick Police Department to assist with efforts to locate a missing mother and her two small children. I was tasked with conducting a canvas search of the surrounding areas to look for Watts, Shanann, date of birth, 11084, Bella, 121713, and Watts, Celeste, 71715. I walked around the community handing out flyers and speaking with homeowners in the area and trying to see if anyone had seen where the missing family went. At the time, I was not sure if they wrote, left on foot or in a vehicle and wanted to help locate them in a timely manner. While talking to several residences in the area, we were also able to locate several houses with a door, ring camera, or other types of video cameras. There you go. Several just in the area. I did not see anyone walking in the area at the time the three parties went missing. Did not see any recording that showed odd vehicles in the area and did not see the three walk past any home with cameras. While I was walking in the neighborhood, I was not informed of any sightings of the family um, of any sightings of the family and I was not able to find anyone who saw or heard anything. I contacted a young Travis, unknown date of birth, who was able to provide me with camera footage from the Windows Hill Subdivision's public pool. He provided me with a USB drive with several hours of video and several angles to view. I did not see anything unusual, did not see any vehicles that were matching the husband's vehicles. I did not see anyone walking around during the night, but the cameras do not show all routes that someone would uh, have been able, to leave the, um, been able to leave the area. The USB drive was entered into evidence and attached to this report. I was met by Levi Husk, unknown date of birth, on 816 at the Frederick Police Department. Husk provided me with a USB drive. He stated that he lives in the 6300 block of Saratoga Trail. I reviewed the video on the USB drive but did not see anything pertaining to the early morning of 813. I placed the USB drive into the Frederick Evidence Lockers. I was provided two USB drives from Tess Simpkins. One USB drive was from store in a number located at an address. The second USB drive was from store number located at address. I gave them to Commander Egan and CBI and FBI personnel. After they were finished with the USB drives, they were given back to me. I did not view the recordings, but have added the USB drives to the report and placed them in the Frederick Evidence Lockers. So he didn't look at those ones, I guess because Commander Egan did? I wonder which ones, well, we, we see which ones they are, these stores. There's nothing here that says whether there was anything on these, though. That's interesting. I'll have to keep a note of that as we go through. End of report, Officer Manley. I was provided two USB drives. One was from this store, and one was from that store. I gave them to Commander Egan and the CBI and FBI personnel. So I imagine I'm going to see something later. We are going to see something later um, from Commander Egan. So I hope to. And uh, that will end it here for this video. That's Discovery Page 76. So um, hopefully try to keep getting some more of these out in the coming days. I hope you're enjoying them. And uh, again, please comment. Um, Press the like button if you're enjoying this, and certainly feel free to subscribe uh, so that you can uh, stay uh, on top of the new ones as they come out. But uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a good one.